Hello and welcome to the Kimi Ring. We are having a test race in Moto3, um, playing at Moto G MotoGP 2020. Getting used to the game at the moment. Um, so just wanted to have a burn around the Kimi Ring, see what it was like, the old Grand Prix of Finland. Um, it's unfortunately been cancelled for 2020, so this might be the only chance we get to see the Kimi Ring. Heading into Q2, we've qualified top of the list uh, as Dennis Onshu. We've got the difficulty on 80%, as I say. Just getting used to this game right now. Getting used to the handling model, and it's a whole lot of fun. All right. We might need to bolt on a new set of fronts and rears. You know what? Let's go out as is. There he is getting on the track. We will soon find out whether he's looking for a quick lap time or whether he's trying out something for the race. Heading out, we'll do a bit of a cider. Now this section here reminds me of the Buriram circuit in India. Uphill, into a bit of a hairpin, and then a really long straight. Should get up to somewhere in the mid 230s by the end of this. The whole lap time we're looking for is probably around a 159. Oh, took a lot of speed in there, particularly for a warm-up. <laughs> His S is a good fun. This is almost a double apex left-hander here. And really opens on exit. Let's get cracking up this hill. I wonder who this is in front of us. Not sure. Whoever's behind us is some way away, so don't need to worry about that. Abura. Alright. Final corner. Concentrate time. Knock the power up to maximum. Drag race. It would be nice to get a bit of toe there, but not fortunate enough to be in that position to do that. Super easy to cut on that left hander and on right hander, even. And I've gone wide as a result. Crash from Ayagura there.
Whoa, that is a stonking laptop. Really happy with that one. At least it is for me. <laughs> Might not be the quickest in the overall scheme of things, but... Set a second lap, see if we can improve. Oh, as I said, super easy to cut. If the bike grips up that little bit too soon. Slap's probably a lost cause. I think we'll bring it into the pits this time around. In we go. Look, you've got to take a 157.8. That's great stuff. So the final grid results for this qualifying session. We've gotten the pole. Tatsuki Suzuki in second. Dennis Foggia in third. Alonso Lopez in fourth. Jean Messia in 5th, Niccolo Antonelli in 6th, Romano Fernardi in 7th, Andrea Migno in 8th, Albert Arenas in ninth, and Philip Salach in 10th. Done very well there. John McPhee qualifying down towards the back of the grid uh, in Q1, I believe. Hello everyone from the Kimi Ring Circuit, where the finish round of the Moto3 Championship is about to start. The skies over the track are clear of clouds, and the latest weather reports forecast temperatures in line with the seasonal average. So 31 degrees, that's pretty good for us. That's soft, soft. Um, it'll be borderline for a medium, but I think we'll make it with a soft. We are now transmitting from the starting grid, where everything seems ready. It's always difficult to predict the results of a Moto3 race, but the riders we're seeing right now definitely seem to be the favourites. Fantastic. We're working with a stock setup here. So we'll see what happens. We'll leave the fuel as is. Now, the things to be mindful of off the start here. You need to get a good launch, otherwise you really bog down. And damage is super sensitive, so we need to steer clear of making contact with anyone. Let's see how we go. Our Barry Bolt is on row six. Chong McPhee, there he is in 23rd. Sky 41 machine of Vietti on the second to last row there, starting off second last. That's uh, be disappointed over in the over in that garage. Only a few seconds left before the Grand Prix of Finland will begin. That heat haze. Out of control. Oh. 
Lopez really shoving it up in the inside there. Off. Tsuki Suzuki trying to run it out really wide on us and came into our line. Okay, we're holding down fourth, that's not too bad. We are down on straight line speed relative to the bikes around us. So we tend to get eaten up down the straights. Let's get on the power early. Held it on the inside there. It was good fun. Let's put the power up. making go of this. Trigia really throwing it up the inside. It's giving us a little bit of damage. Ripped up wham, so much earlier than I thought it would be. So we've cut the corner. Look at him take off. Let's try the undercut. Oh, that was messy. That was very messy.
going very deep there, very deep. It's going to hurt our run. Let's hope we can hold the position to the first corner. It's looking like we will. Took a really narrow angle that time and it ran us wide on the exit. Made it a bit awkward. It's kind of stuffed up our rhythm through this section. Lots of rhythm sections to the Kimi ring that if you get that first corner wrong, pay for it for the next couple of corners and that was huge from Migno. What was he doing? <laughs> oh, and that's us. Oof. We're just getting swamped there. Couldn't get out of the way. battling it out. All our fault too. really come out onto your line. I've crashed a couple of riders here. Dirty stuff from me. <laughs> the straights we make up in the twisty bits so that's a bit of comfort clean before I think we're about 20k an hour down on top speed because of the damage we picked up so that's gonna hurt us let's see if we can race and beat our teammate Six laps to go and five laps of fuel, we're probably going to have to save. We'll uh, need to turn the wick down next lap, we'll probably do that after the big straight. Just so we don't lose too much more time.
lucky not to get a track cut there. grass again. Living on the edge. So, Moto GP20, all in all, I'd have to say it's a really good milestone game again. It's, it's not easy, it's not the biggest pick up and play title, it's not like the old Capcom MotoGP games. You do need to work at it. But it's rewarding when you get it right. And when it goes wrong it makes sense. So nothing to complain about. As far as the Kimi ring goes, it's a really nice track. It takes advantage of the geographical layout of the land. Whether that's man-made geography or natural, I'm not sure. But it's got a nice flow to it. It's a real rhythm track. Works fantastically for bikes. Having a blast around here on the bikes. For cars, I'm not sure if there's a plan for cars to race here, but it probably doesn't have as many big passing zones as you'd like for a car track. If you are going to get the passes done in a car, you're going to have to be super brave. You've got the end of the big straight. Down here you'd have to follow quite close and hope for the best. Carry it through the double apex here and then hope to make a move on the inside into this right-hander. Beyond that, your passing opportunities would be pretty limited, so it'll be interesting to see how races play out at this track for cars, but ultimately it's great to see a new international circuit on the calendar, particularly one in Finland that's produced so many great drivers in particular, but a couple of decent riders over the years as well. Do you get the chance? Absolutely give Kimi Ring a go. We've kind of settled into no man's land here. sitting last of the classified runners so not exactly covering myself in glory Tires have held up reasonably well for us, so I'm happy with that. The new tyre model seems to work pretty well with the outer, inner, and inside edges all having different temperatures and different wear rates. Unfortunately, that I can see, I don't think you have asymmetrical tyres, so tracks like Phillip Island will be super brutal on the inside edge. The fuels are, and the fuel burns a little bit misleading. 
if you pump it all the way up, all of a sudden you're going through fuel like nobody's business and it stabilizes. It seems to have this jump and then stabilizes, so you sort of need to factor in that if you put your fuel, if I were to put this up to two now, my fuel burn's probably going to go down to, might have three and a half laps left, let's see. Look at that fuel number drop. And it's still falling. Slowing, but falling. you'd think that that's pretty stable now. So yeah, three and a half. Oh, less, hang on. Under three with two laps to go. So let's put it back onto standard revs. damage has absolutely ruined our race. <laughs> From the amount of riders we've dumped though, we probably deserve it. I'm going to be honest. Got some wheel spin when tipping it in there, so the rear tire is really starting to uh, really starting to wear, and it's getting super loose at times. Still got a fair bit of confidence in the front tire. It's not looking like it's going to give way any soon, any time soon, even. Barely getting up to sixth gear. We're almost ten seconds behind Rossi. That's uh, pretty disgraceful. Two deep, yet again. And coming up to the last lap.
Oh, we binned it. That is brutal. Is across the line. He is the winner of the Moto 3 Finnish Grand Prix. Last corner and coming across the line, what a disappointing race as far as results go, but the stars of this exciting great race fun. Are finishing the final lap. Let's take so there you have it. These moments to take a look at the Moto3 final ranking. Jean Mazia, Alonso Lopez. Nicolo Antonelli, Dennis Foggia, Celestino Vietti, John McPhee has made him has gotten all the way up to sixth. Ayagura, Tony Arbolino, Philip Salach, and Gato Toba rounding out the top ten. Look after yourself, everyone. Until next time, we'll see you later.